Hello. This video will serve as a very brief introduction to the Astro AI True RMS 6000 digital multimeter, a very versatile multimeter that you could be used that can be used in a variety of applications. I want to start out by mentioning that I'd like to cover in a quick review the following general features, measuring voltage, measuring current, measuring resistance, measuring capacitance, measuring duty cycle, and the auto on-off feature. To start out, let's take a look at what the face of this multimeter looks like. And I'm going to take the probes and most of the time when you measure parameters, we're going to be measuring resistance and we're going to be measuring voltage. So the input for the voltage and resistance measurements are over here with the red probe. And I'll insert that. And the common for all measurements is with the black probe. I put that in there like that. And if you take a look at these two probes, they come with end caps. Make sure, I took the one off the black probe, make sure you remove these before you start using the meter. Now, they're, they're difficult to pull off, so you have to maybe get a pair of pliers to pull them off. So you want to get your meter ready to go to measure the different parameters that we're going to use the meter for. The first thing I want you to notice is we have an off position on both ends here on this select dial. We can measure... DC voltage, we can measure AC voltage, we can measure resistance or continuity, we can measure capacitance, a duty cycle, and the current measurements are over here. I'm not going to worry about gain, I'm not going to worry about clamp current measurements over at this point here. Um, we're just going to me measure with this meter voltage current, continuity, capacitance, duty cycle, and, and, and uh, we will use this dial to make the selection. If you take a look, first thing I want to do is mention that when you measure your DC voltage, it's this selection right down here. It's the first selection. Your input, like I said, is the red lead over here in the common connection. If you measure AC voltage, it shows you a little sinusoid here. You have to put it in this position. Input the red lead and the common is here. When you measure continuity or resistance, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it to this point right here. And I want you to notice that we are in an auto mode up here. If you look at the upper, it's hard to see because this won't focus, but there is an auto indication up here. When you do any of these measurements, I suggest you keep it in auto. It comes in the auto mode. You could go ahead and you can hold the range button down and you can take that off if you want to do a manual measurement. But I would keep the range on auto select. So I'd, I'd click that one time and hold that down for two seconds and notice that we got auto up here. So we're measuring automatically and it'll auto range for you. For continuity measurements and for measuring resistance, I have two, two resistors here and I'm putting it on a resistance measurement. Click holding, pinching out with one hand and I'm holding the other lead the other probe on the other lead and notice I'm getting 220 ohms. Now I could pinch this here with my other with my other thumb and I can see that's 220.4 ohms for this 220 ohm resistor. Just be careful when you do resistance measurements because if it's a very high resistance and you pinch it with both of your thumbs you're, you have body resistance in parallel with that resistor and it's going to give you a, an incorrect reading. That's particularly true on very high readings in the k-ohm and meg-ohm. When you have low-valued resistors, your, the parallel resistance to your body doesn't make a lot of difference, doesn't affect the measurement that much. But for the purpose of doing measurements 
on components. Let me remove those two probes right there. Let me use this multifunction socket. If you take a look, this kit comes with a very convenient multifunction socket. And th these lower points here are for measuring NPN and PNP transistors. We're not going to use that. We're just going to use these two inputs right here. We're going to use this one here, and we're going to use this one here. And what you do is you plug it in between common and the input on the right-hand side there. And then you have to insert your components, whether you're measuring resistance or capacitance, between these two points here. But, but, but when you first buy this, when you first buy this kit, this multifunction socket, it's really tight. I get a small screwdriver and just insert it in there. Don't get a large screwdriver. You don't want to separate these, these too much. I just push it down in there to, to, to open those up a little bit. I'm going to take my resistor and I'm going to insert it vertically down in there. I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to insert it vertically. And I have, I have the resistor there. If you take a look, I have the resistor there between those two inputs. And I have it on ohms, and I'm measuring 220.4 ohms. Let me take that out. I have another resistor here, just for the heck of it. And you, you'll do this to verify resistance values or capacitance values. It's, make sure it gets down and inserted in there vertically. That, if you take a look, that's measuring 0.993 k-ohms. We have K ohms up here. That's a thousand ohm resistor with the tolerance. It, it's within tolerance. So that's the way I want you to verify, or you should be verifying your resistance measurements with this multifunction socket. So let me remove it. Let me go back and put these probes back in. Red to input there. Take the black, put it in common. And let's talk about continuity measurements. I want to see if there's a continuous connection between two points. First thing I'm going to do is put those leads together and notice I'm getting very, very low resistance. Though the resistance that it's measuring right there, 0.5 ohms, is just the lead resistance. You can take that out by doing a relative measurement. You can read about that in the manual, but we're not going to worry about that. So. That's a continuity test. So if you have a piece of wire, and I have a, I have a short four-inch piece of wire here, but if you have a spool wire, you want to check continuity in it. You just pinch the one end of the wire, pinch the other end of the wire. If you take a look, th that should give you very, very close to zero ohms. Let me get this here on here a little bit better. Very, very small value of resistance, and it's measuring a small value of resistance there. What, what I would like to do is put this on a continuity test. And what happens, you get a little speaker. When you push this select, you get a little speaker up here in the middle. Let's see if it's select. There it is. And when you, when you get continuity, you get a sound. So if you're checking continuity of a wire... Or you're checking continuity of a of a fuse. I would I would select this this odd this odd, um this sound measurement here right here to give you that audio tone for continuity. The other thing I'd want to mention here is measuring current. We're not going to measure current that often, but when you do. When you're up 10 amps max, I'm saying anywhere between 400 milliamps and 10 amps, you have to use this input over here. If you're measuring anything in the microamp up to 400 milliamps, you use this input here to measure current. Now, here's the thing about measuring current you have to be careful with. If you're measuring current and you forget to take it 
off the current side here. Keep in mind, you have to rotate this here to measure in microamps or measure in milliamps or measure in amps. You have to make the selection here before you insert these here. But if you're measuring current, let's say you're measuring milliamps of current like this, and you have this on milliamps right here. And you, you put this in series, obviously, with your element that you're measuring the current in that particular branch. Current has to be measured in series. And you forget to remove this to measure voltage, and you go into a voltage measurement on your board, you're going to, you you can destroy the, the, the multimeter. But, and to, to protect that meter from being destroyed, they have fuses that they, ins they have built in. So I'm going to talk about that briefly, but I want you to, me I want to mention the fact particularly if you're a student and you're using this in a laboratory exercise. If you're measuring current and you forget to remove this input from the current side over to the input side over here on the right, you're going to blow the fuse instantly. So you have to make sure before you go back to voltage measurement, you put this back over here. We're not going to be measuring current very often in the courses that I'm using this meter in. But if you do blow the fuse, what you have to do is come around here, just open this up right here, and you'll see two hex screws here. You want to remove them. And inside there, you'll see two fuses. So it'll be a 400 milliamp fast blow 600 volt fuse if you damage this input. And there'll be a 10 amp fast 600 volt fuse for the 10 amp and you just have to replace it it'll protect the meter the meter won't get destroyed so very very difficult to destroy this meter if you have this as an input over here and you're using that as a common you only have to really worry about blowing those fuses if you're doing current measurements and you forget to put the input back over here and you start measuring voltage again so this, this off feature is really, really nice. If you accidentally keep one of these selects on, in 15, in 15 minutes, it'll beep a couple times and it'll automatically shut the meter off. It'll save the battery. So that's, that's a really nice feature. If you forget to turn this to the, one of the two off positions, 15 minutes, it'll beep a couple times and it'll, it'll shut that off. So... If you want to get the meter back on, you either push the select or you push the range button. And you just hold that in for two seconds. If you need anything backlit, just push in this middle button right here. And notice it'll give you a backlight. If you push it, hold it in for two seconds, it'll turn that off. That's a nice feature to have. If you're measuring hertz or duty cycle... You have to have this position in hertz or duty cycle. If this select position isn't in hertz or duty cycle, you won't get the hertz symbol up here. And then you can go back to measure in voltage if you want, just by rotating this. But keep in mind if you back to the to the voltage measurement, either DC or AC. But if you're in hertz up here, you, you definitely have to make sure that you press the Hertz duty cycle, so it gives you and that toggles off and on for you here. I would really highly recommend um, to get more familiar with this meter that you go. I know it comes with a little instruction manual, but you know I'd highly recommend you go out online. And you go to this site. It's a secure website. And just download that manual. Print it out. Not that many pages. And just read through it. It'll give you a lot of good points on how to use this very versatile true RMS multimeter. I'm not going to mention the fact that it's a true RMS multimeter. It's very important. But in another lecture, I'll talk about the importance of having a meter that when you're measuring AC voltage, it gives you a true RMS indication. And that concludes this brief introduction on the Astro AI DM6000 digital multimeter.